Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com. That's the home of video double bass lessons online. So if you haven't been to the website yet, you can go and check that out after this. Now today, I'm continuing on with my series of real world gigging tips to help you get set up on your gig in the right way. What you should be looking out for, um, what you should do on the gig and how you can handle things like feedback and setting up your amp and stuff. I've got one here to demonstrate all of that for you. So let's get stuck into the details now. Well, my first tip for you is that when you get to the gig, set up on the hi-hat side of the drummer. So the hi-hat is in between you and the drummer. And as they're playing, you'll be able to clearly see what they're doing in terms of uh, the snare drum, and you'll probably be able to see their bass drum as well, possibly their feet. But if you were to set up on the other side, the ride cymbal is in between you, which can kind of mask exactly what they're playing on the rest of the drum kit, and it puts you further away. I like to be as close as possible so I can really hear what they're playing and lock in with them. The other thing you should bear in mind is that ideally you would be set back a little bit so the drummer is able to see the keyboard player or the guitar player. Usually there will be another instrumentalist to your left. If you're set back a little bit and if you're too far forward then you'll be obstructing their sight line and I've countless gigs I've been asked to move further back and of course it's tricky because you generally have the amplifier directly behind you so you need quite a lot of space so I try to get in there early and get that amplifier right back so I can kind of position myself between the drummer and usually the keyboard player or guitar player. When you're not playing and you need to uh, do something with the bass, you need to put it down. It's a good idea to make sure that you've got room for that. And there's a few different options. I just wanna quickly highlight a few dangers with each. If you put it against a corner, just make sure that you're not near any radiators. That's of course really important, but leaning it in a corner is a great solution if you've got access to one. Leaning it on the floor or just laying it down is, is really good, but I would suggest retracting the M-pin because as people are moving around the stage, it's very easy for someone to knock the M-pin and then start the bass moving and uh, potentially damage it. It's also possible that people might knock over music stands. That happens all the time. And if your bass is on the floor, it's a potential uh, problem. So whilst I generally do just lay it on the floor, I try to keep an eye on it and make sure there's no music stands that can be knocked or there's, the end pin has been retracted so there's less chance of damaging it. Of course, you could always take a double bass stand. It's just something extra to carry and it takes up um, more room on the stage. So I generally don't bother, but that's an option for you as well if you really want to make sure that your instrument is out of harm's way. Now the bow, of course, is really fragile. So you need to make sure that you're putting that in a case before you put it back into your double bass case. So effectively, you're gonna need something like this, um, but they're just too fragile to leave out on the stage and don't leave them on your music stand. If you're not using your bow, put it back in the case. I'd really recommend that because they're expensive and really easy to damage. Now let's have a look at the amp itself and how you should be setting that up. Speaker-wise, I've got a Euphonic Audio Wizzy M-Line cab, which has these side ports, um, and it makes it really easy uh, to hear. I find that the sound is great, and I use an Acoustic Image Claris um, single-channel amplifier as well. And I love both of these. I've had them since 2008, I think I bought both of them. Um, so yeah, terrific gear if you're looking for uh, double bass amplification. Acoustic Image or Euphonic Audio make great amps and cabs. Now. There's a couple of things you need to bear in mind. Usually I'd have the amp directly behind me and I generally have my amp on the floor. There's a handle at the bottom of the cab which pulls out and angles the whole thing back. Um, so I like that as it sort of directs it a little bit more towards me. And it also reduces um, any boominess that you might get from uh, the amplifier being in direct contact with the stage, particularly hollow stages, they can become quite boomy. It's also worth bearing in mind that if you're in a corner, that will probably be acting as a natural amplifier anyway. So just go easy on the volume. And if you're struggling to hear yourself, shove it on a beer crate, put it on a chair and have it directly behind you. And that way it'll be closer to your ear and you'll be able to, to better hear the sound as well as hopefully reducing any of the boom that you'd have if it was in contact with the floor. Now, amplifier wise, I always set my EQ completely flat, but 
it's going to depend on what your bass naturally sounds like with the uh, uh, with the pickup, I use a Fishman Full Circle pickup and I'm really happy with the natural acoustic sound. I'll only take stuff away if there's an issue. So if there was a really boomy sound or too bassy or something, I might reduce the low end or possibly reduce the mid if it sounded a bit a bit nasal perhaps, the, you know, I might take the mid down. Uh, but generally I leave the EQ flat, but there is one switch that is amazing for sorting out feedback that you need to know about. And this is a high pass filter, which is also known as a low cut filter. And essentially what it will do is remove the extreme low end frequencies. So below the E string, notes that you're not gonna, or pitches or frequencies you're not using anyway. And it will just tighten up the sound of the bass and essentially make it less boomy. Now I'll always start with it off, but if, this, if the, you know, the room that I'm working in is too boomy or I'm struggling to hear the bass clearly, I will use this um, high pass or low cut filter. I also have um, a preamp, um, it's an HPF, I think, I'll put a note on the screen, um, which I use when I'm using a borrowed amplifier as well, because this is so important to me and for cutting feedback, it's absolutely essential. Well, I hope that's helped you. And if you have any tips of your own, any suggestions about how to set up on a gig that I haven't covered, please join the conversation and leave a comment below this video. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. Keep practicing hard. I'll see you next time.